Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. The new direct purchase inquiry line from you to me and my hand-picked crew regarding questions you have about purchasing this or any watch you see here on Watchbox Reviews. tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Today, we are discussing the 2019 Tudor Heritage Black Bay Bronze Gray. Gray dial, gray bezel. A new for 2019 launch that takes the 43mm Black Bay Bronze case, first debut back in 2016 and creates a little bit of a tonal contrast with what has come before. A timepiece that is reasonably slender for a jacket, though not a tight dress sleeve, 147 millimeters for an automatic winding and three-day power reserve, 200 meter diver, is respectable. From lug to lug, it is a wearable case. 52.5, but you can see the lugs are sharply downturned, so it doesn't wear quite as large as that span would suggest. The spacing between the lugs, a burly and modern 23 millimeters. So while this watch is designed to evoke 1950s and early 60s Tudor and Rolex Submariners, it is very much a watch proportionally of our time. The watch also features a wonderful strap, which as you can see externally is slightly weathered, rusticated, and distressed provides a handsome texture and a nice black contrast. It's really anthracite, a very dark gray, with the contrasting stitch and the contrasting binding. Sheer cut showing the layers of construction from the side, and you'll appreciate on the underside they're using either a suede leather or Alcantara for a wonderfully smooth, silky suede feel. A matching bronze pin buckle here, Tudor branded, and I appreciate that they thought about the thickness of the straps. They created an arch over the top, so the bridge itself is elevated above the stanchions on the side, so the the strap sits inside the buckle when it's down on your wrist and rather than stacking up. It sits in the buckle and stays nice and flat and unobtrusive. A uh, satin finish along the case band. It is bronze, so over time it will become a little bit darker or patinaed, and although you can always restore it with generally vinegar. In a lot of cases, folks like to let their bronze cases patina and become individual. You can see there are strap tool holes. If you want to swap, you can stick your strap tool in there. There's a flared bevel on each lug designed to remind you of the era when Rolex and Tudor watches shared cases, and they shared cases with those glorious hand-finished lug bevels. You have a screw-down crown, big crown style, so we're evoking watches like the Rolex 5510 or Rolex 6538 type of Submariners, also the big crown Tudor Submariners that shared those cases. Note you have the Tudor Rose on the crown, but then you have the post-1968 Tudor Shield logo on the dial. That's a signature of the in-house caliber Tudors. You've got that Shield logo on the dial and the Rose on the crown. Screw down crown, 200 meters water resistant. You can see there is a matte, vaguely granular textured dial base with a gilt style print and evocative golden chapter ring. You'll note it's not quite yellow gold, it's sort of a rose gold print. Applique Tri-Arabics 369 and indices, so it's an upscale dial. It's not the printed dial you would have found on a vintage Tudor or Rolex. I should also mention that while it features a lot of 60s and 50s cues externally, it does feature the 60s and 70s Tudor Submariner Snowflake hands. So it's a little bit of a pot pie of vintage Tudor and Rolex styling elements. Now, although it is a solid case back, Tudor, the Rolex sister company, tells you what's inside. The MT5601, 25 joules automatic winding, three day power reserve, eight beats per second, full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock resistance. It features a stop seconds functionality, so when you pull that crown, it stops the movement, so you can set to a reference time. It also features a COSC chronometer certification and one refinement you won't find on many Rolex movements, which is a silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism. It is a full service tank tough bi-directional winding, Rolex Tudor sports watch movement, and you may have heard it's also used in Breitling Super Ocean Heritage models as the B20, and this is one of the most highly regarded, tough, accurate, and refined sports watch calibers you will find, especially because of the long legs with the three-day power reserve and the sheer toughness. Again, a COSC chronometer, but Rolex and Tudor both adjust their movements as fully cased up watches to achieve a higher level of accuracy as a fully assembled watch. You can see this lovely Tudor Tudor Heritage Black Bay Bronze on the watch box, but before you do, I want you to hear the bezel, which of course you can line up with the minute hand. I actually prefer it to Rolex bezel action as it's louder and more distinct, and in case you're wondering how a 43 millimeter 
Black Bay wears on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You get a good sense of the watch on my wrist. It sits well. It's not quite the fit that the standard 41 would be, but I can still recommend this watch for a wrist as small as approximately 15, maybe 14 and a half centimeter circumference if your wrist is more oval than round. It sits comfortably, however, and I could say it'll probably sit comfortably and secure even on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for questions about this watch. Tudor Black Bay by Night. Note the loomed diamond style snowflake seconds hand. Every dive watch should have a loomed seconds hand.